And God delivered me from a lot of difficult pain and difficult circumstances in the midst of that. But that was a quite time in my life when I said, why God? Why would you allow such a thing to happen? Can you relate to this? Have you had moments like that in your life where you've said why? I think that Habakkuk can also relate to us. We see in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, we see several questions that Habakkuk asks that are kind of in relation to this why God type situations. He says in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, he says this. He says, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. If I could ask a lot of these questions, and in essence he's asking, I want to just kind of summarize his five questions. Question one would be, God, why does evil seem to thrive and yet you don't do anything? See that in verse 2. He says it in a different way. He says, why do I have to see all of this evil? Why can't I just have a peaceful life? Why do you, and he says the third question is, why don't you stop all of this evil around me? It seems that there are no consequences for breaking your commands. Is everything I believe false? And lastly, Habakkuk asked this question, Why did the wicked prosper, and yet you seem to idly watch it? Have you ever asked questions like this? Which of these questions do you ask the most often? Which of these questions do you have the biggest struggle with? Maybe in our current climate, um, you've asked these questions a lot. <laughs> kind of cycled through them quite a bit. Why do these certain things happen? And I think, one thing I do want to stress in the midst of this, Habakkuk was a man of God. Habakkuk is a man of faith. Obviously, his script, the scripture and the prophecies that he wrote are in the Bible, so he's someone that, that definitely believed in the Lord. But yet he asked questions like this. I do want to undergird what I'm saying is, it is okay for you to ask questions like this of the Lord. It is okay for you to have doubts and wonder and say, God, why? Why? One thing I do want to relate is, how did Habakkuk ask some of these questions? How did he ask a few of these questions? And I want us to focus on, kind of dive into a little bit here. In verses 2 through 3 in Habakkuk chapter 1, um, I want to read this one more time. It says, How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you make me tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. There are six problems that Habakkuk names. Six problems that he names. In verse 2, he talks about violence. In verse 3, he talks about iniquity, destruction. He says violence again. He says strife and contention. But one thing I do think is important to notice is in connection to these six specific problems that he mentions, he says the word Yahweh or Lord in capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in verse 1. He also says the word you five times. So he names six problems and he has six mentions of God or Yahweh in this instance. And so essentially he's saying, he's asking God and believing that God is the answer to these problems. Why God and believing that God is also the answer to these issues? 